So there are multiple ways, a million ways really, to deadlift, to execute a deadlift, to set up for the deadlift. What, the way you're doing it now that we talked about, uh, I feel we're not getting enough um, tension throughout the body before the pull, right? So what you're doing kind of looks like you're all comfort, comfortable getting there, getting there, getting there, and then you bloop right into it, right? Or over here, it's kind of like here, and you unravel, and then get tight and go. That works for some people, but not most people, and I am thinking now that it's not the best for uh, someone of your experience level, because it requires a lot of more, um, a lot more contextual feedback that I feel you don't have quite yet. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start using a different uh, way to set up your deadlift, right? It's gonna come in four or five steps, but anyways, ultimately, what it's gonna look like in its uh, entirety is gonna be like that. Once more from the side, and then we're gonna break it down, don't worry, but in, in total, in totality, it's gonna be like that. Bloop, squeeze, bend, 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 squeeze, go. So, there's a couple cues, well, steps rather, that are gonna be important here. We're gonna break it down into five, and then we're gonna break it down um, later on after you get the basics into just two, maybe three. So first things first, the proper way to grab the floor is gonna be, um, you're a wide boy, but like, you gotta stay in the camera. What you're gonna do is internally rotate, right? Kinda like knee valgus almost, so that your feet come up or feel like they come up. They don't have to physically come up. Internally rotate. Grab the floor with your big toe, and then use your glutes to rotate out. Now, my glutes are tensioned to the maximum. The, uh, and I, I can control the floor any which way. Your feet might cramp, totally fine. The other thing with this is I want you to be slightly forward. So from the side, it's gonna be like, internally rotate, grab the floor, slightly forward. So that your weight is more on the uh, front of your foot, like the ball of your foot, than it is middle foot or heel or anything else. Um, one of the big things I feel most sumo pullers need to do is start a little more forward. Something we see is like they try to dig the heel in, they go midfoot, and then they forget like, oh, because I'm leveraging against something, my weight is necessarily gonna go this direction, right? The vector is actually that way. If you pull straight up, you'll dump forward, and you're, you'll strip a pull. And that's kind of what we see at heavier weights, and that's one of the things that happens to you being so tall. Um, and then your lockout, because you're here, uh, is not the most powerful. So, step one. Internally rotate. Grab the floor. Weight slightly forward. From there, real hard, real difficult, ready? Squeeze the shit out of your quads. It's just gonna be up as hard as you possibly can. I want that contraction to be like, just fucking brutal, like your knees are gonna rip off right here, right now. So, step one, boop, boop. Step two, squeeze the shit out of your quads. Now, your butt, your hips, um, all the other architecture and your quads should be tensioned to the maximum. Your, your ankles should be taut, your knees should be fully externally rotated, your hips should be adequately rotated. So from there, step three, it's gonna be brace, set your back, and your grip, right? Then step four, so you're gonna bend as far as you can, tension those glutes and hamstrings. And as soon as you can't get down any further because of the tautness in your hamstrings, bend the knees just a hair, just a hair. Open the hips a little more, little more. Grabbing the bar, squeezing the quads one more time, just the quads, and then go. So what that last squeeze is gonna do is that's what's gonna be essentially what loads your uh, slack pulling, right? So when you, when you squeeze them at the top, you go down, you're gonna have to bend your knees a hair, and you squeeze them again, and rotate out. And 
the bar comes with you. The whole idea is to keep your back as a pulley system. Your back is rigid, it's not active, it's like a, it's a passive thing. So, uh, I know this is like really clunky and seems like there's a lot of steps, but when done in succession and all at once with experience, it gets a lot easier and it gets quicker. It's gonna feel awkward at first and it might feel like your hamstrings are tearing off your ischial tubes and that's pretty much okay, it's gonna happen. Um, so in totality, one more time, what it's gonna look like from both angles, floor, grab, squeeze, quads, down, bend, knees, quads again, go and push the floor away. Um, that's all it's gonna be from the side, as if it was a fluid motion. It'll be essentially. And again, starting more forward, vector this direction. Um, there was one more thing I was supposed to bring up. Should have wrote down notes. Oh, what was it? Fuck. Being forward, being backward. It was, oh, um, sorry. I don't have the ability to edit that out. So the other thing is everyone's been preaching externally rotate, 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 much like I just did. And also they're like, just open your hips, open your hips, open your hips. It doesn't really work that way. That's like a very rudimentary way to think about things. So without getting the long explanation, uh, what you'll see me do, and actually the top guys, is they're not as externally rotated and abducted as possible. Their feet aren't like out as to their sides. At least not the guys that don't fall over, right? Um, so in combination with the internally rotate to grab the floor, you'll actually find that you can't open your hips maximally. Because when you open your hips maximally, that end range is actually a structural end range. And we don't wanna be relying on structural uh, stability. We want to generate our own stability. Uh, stability is kind of a catchphrase, but we're just gonna use it for simplicity's sake right now. Um, so when you see me deadlift, one thing you'll see is I'll actually purposely rotate this way. Same thing with that squat. It's very slight, but you can see it if you pick like a certain spot on the leg, you'll see that it's rotated in. So like this is as much external rotation as I have, right? I'm naturally externally rotated. Most people are. Ooh. Slippery. But if you bring your toes in, like I know we talk about a lot, just a hair, it only has to be a little bit. And then you grab the floor, the tension's coming from your body, the fact that your feet are glued to the floor and they're not moving, and then that ankle is fully externally rotated and you get a little bit of, um, a little bit of inversion actually. And then from there, now you have a stable base for your, your glutes and everything to work off of, right? So now your glutes can torque that down. You hit end range there. Now you go to the knees and that's gonna externally rotate. The knees are gonna maximally externally rotate. That's totally fine. That's just anatomy. There's nothing much we can do about that. But as you can see, my hip is not fully externally rotated. I am actively trying to, but now my quads are so tensioned. My knees and ankles are so tensioned. My hips have so much tension that I can just brace hard, pay attention to my back position, but also just kind of be passive with my back. So once you have everything tensioned, everything's good, somewhat internally rotated, but maximally trying to externally rotate, while pushing through the floor as if you're gonna corkscrew, your back, it's passive, right? Even from here, the power just comes from your glutes, your hams, your quads. That's about it. And your brace, obviously. And what I feel this is gonna do is it's gonna help you eliminate um, a lot of your SI issues. So those five cues, if you wanna rewind, this last sixth cue talk, whatever, more of a nuanced topic, not something that you need right now, but something to think about in the future. We're also gonna apply it to your squats. Um, but I'm gonna work on that separately.